So now that we know what uh, link data is about and linguistic link data in particular, how it has evolved and well, we have also seen some of the, the their benefits from Christian presentations, but I'd like to, to reflect, to, to quickly summarize um, some of them. And um, afterwards, I'd like to, to comment on, on some ongoing initiatives, some running initiatives that illustrate uh, how this, this, uh, this technology is not only an academic effort, uh, a theoretical effort, but it is being used in practice by a large community, a growing community, and also uh, by, by some companies, early adopters. Uh, first of all, let me bring you some virtual coffee and sweets from Spain uh, because of the time and because of the tradition of this, I guess. Um, and now the outline of my presentation, which is only three topics. I will present um, benefits of link linguistic link data and briefly talk about a couple of initiatives, Nexus Linguarum um, and the Pretalot project. So as for um, the interest of language um, link data for language resources, um, link data is a mature technology. Uh, it's been adopted for, for representing linguistics as well. And uh, the question is, uh, it might be useful for representing language resources uh, the, the answer and our experience is, is yes, definitely. Um, we understand language resources as um, resources exposed in an, elect in an electronic uh, digital way, dictionaries, terminologies, lexica, corpora, encyclopedic resources, word nets, etc. But often these resources are disconnected from each other. So we can talk about silos of data. They use for representing the data heterogeneous formats, proprietary formats, and non-standard access means. So different APIs in different programming languages in different with different formats, and following different representation schemes. Uh, also, the access level is very different from one to, to another. So you can find in on the web reference to a language resources. And uh, when you want to access to them, just you have to write an email to the creator <laughs> or maybe more for sophisticated um, things like uh, like web services. So yeah, heterogeneity in any case. Of course, uh, Clarine and, and uh, Metashare and uh, other initiatives goes in the direction of, of reducing such heterogeneous landscape, but uh, I think that we we think that the link data can play a, a, a key role here. Uh, let me show this cool slide, which which is an example of how interoperability with link data could work. Let's imagine uh, the term uh, or, or the len the entry red, meaning network in Spanish, and imagine that we have several uh, language resources describing this term in several uh, scattered on the web with different uh, types of information. For instance, uh, the Royal Academy will have uh, gender, written form, and other sources like Wiktionario uh, uh, will have phonetic form. For instance, there will be translations in, in Apertium, or even in Wikipedia, you can access to, to uh, other information or images or other data associated with it. So, uh, in if if we imagine that this information is represented following um, practice of the of the semantic web, representing following a common um, model, for instance, lemon, and published as linked data, we could end up in a situation in which all the information, all the graph that uh, relates information f that that. Uh, gives information around red can be uh, accessed in, in a unified way. So even if these sources of data have, be, have been created separately and for different purposes, you would have a, a single entry access or a federated uh, entry point. So uh, you can interoperate, interoperate between these uh, data sources and uh, you can traverse all the information related to this entry, red, 
uh, moving from the graph, from well, the information coming from Royal Academy to the information coming from Aperture and so on. So this is an, il an illustration to, to show, um, yeah, how it could look like. So a unified graph of uh, lexical, not only lexical, but uh, linguistic information in general. To summarize benefits of this, uh, linked data can be key in, aggregate, in the aggregation of linguistic resources. You can explicitly link resources. So following the, the RDF pattern that uh, Christian just mentioned, you can declare explicit links between specific data. So between this uh, 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 grammatical category, this part of the speech, and, the, and that uh, lexical entry, that translation in that language, in the other language. Uh, you will, instead of using dedicated uh, proprietary API, you can use uh, standards to expose and to access the data, like Sparkle, to query the data. And uh, with these, you can compose and create uh, improved discovery services. And um, you have also the opportunity of just um, agreed vocabularies uh, for representing language linguistic content, like uh, the already mentioned ontolex lemon for lexical data. Um, let me mention here this study of, uh, of the previous project, Cracking the Language Barrier, that um, identified linked data as a core technology in the roadmap for the multilingual di digital single market. So um, emphasizing uh, the added value of linked data in, uh, in a um, multilingual landscape as well. So with this, I wanted you just to enumerate a few benefits of, of uh, linguistic linked data. As I said, uh, to illustrate that this is not an isolated effort um, and it is being used by projects and adopted by, by companies. Let me quickly go through a couple of initiatives. Uh, there are many more. Actually, Marco will present uh, very in, in his presentation yet another one. Uh, let me start with Nexus Linguarum. This is um, a cost action, so it is not a research project per se, but it is a cost action, the European Network for Web-Centered Linguistic Data Science. So with the idea of promoting in Europe um, the area of uh, linguistic data science and to build this ecosystem of multilingual and semantically interpretable linguistic data. Bridging together, uh, well, bringing together um, different stakeholders, linguists, computer scientists, terminologies, and so on. So this cost action is, is uh, a large one. We have uh, 42 countries participating as full members or, and also as um, near neighborhood countries, observers, and so on. So 42 countries is a large network of collaborators, more than uh, 200 registered as members of, of the network. And uh, basically, the core technologies, the, the idea of Nexus is to, 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 to uh, make this uh, environment, this ecosystem growth as an intersection or in the intersection of these technologies. Language resources on one hand, link data on the other, also natural language processing. So techniques to, well, to bridge the gap between humans and computers through language and also data analysis. Let me finish this short presentation mentioning also uh, an ongoing project, which is Pretalot, where to use multilingual link language data for knowledge services across sectors. So there are 10 partners, this is led by, by John McRae from National University in Galway, Ireland, um, and with a consortium that includes uh, not only academics, but uh, also companies like Semantic Web Company, or their links, you know, University Press, Semalytics. So the idea of this project is uh, to propose new methodologies to exploit um, uh, services that has been that are using uh, linguistic data as a core technology for for representing the data and also for, for exposing the data. So the idea, the final idea is to, to create a new generation of linked data aware uh, NLP services and put them together in workflows and in, in new innovative methodologies. So this is in a, in a nutshell, the data value chain of the, of the 
project. So the idea is to have language resources disconnected, um, open, closed data from different sources, and then convert them, transform them into linked data, and um, link them as well. So a, a number of services built on top of this link, link data can be composed through workflows and give support to practical applications. We have in the project, we have several pilots running from e-government to pharmacy and to technology companies. So that's it from my side. Um, I hope this serves as a very quick and incomplete overview of benefits of linguistic link data, as well as, uh, well, uh, some examples of, of uh, initiatives using it. I forgot to mention that Nexus Linguarum is an open network, so you all are welcome to join at any time. It's a four year duration action and we are, uh, we haven't reached the, the mid of the action yet. So there's still of, a, a lot of things to do, a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. I have a question if I may. Um, I'm, you talk about resources. Um, you don't mention tools. And I wonder if you if you treat tools as resources in their own right, or are they something special? Uh, if I may, maybe um, when we refer to language resources, uh, we we are adopting here this definition by the Open Minted Glossary, which comprises um, data sets in machine readable formats, so data, but also tools and services. So possibly the, the main focus, since we are talking about data representation and modeling and so on, is, is data. But there's also room for services. Actually, there are formats like the NIP format, which is intended to make services interoper interoperable. So be, if you are sure that the output of one service is compatible with the input of the other, then you can chain these services. So even if we typically put the focus on data, also services can be or are part of this initiative as well. Okay, thank you very much, thanks.